watch a lot so long. Look at all these glasses that people left for me. <laughs> it's very kind of you. Well, I'm sure some of you are wondering why you're here. Maybe somebody dragged you here, you just felt like you should come, but I'm sure you have questions just about life in general, and I have a feeling that today you're going to get some answers. That's always a good thing, right? So as always at Shabbat, you should just try to relax. I, I know life is ridiculously busy for everybody, but that was the whole idea about Shabbat. You know, it really was. It wasn't, you know, it's very sad. I, I think the Christian community look at Orthodox Jews like they're legalistic, but it's actually the Orthodox Jews that look at the Christian community and feel like they're legalistic because Christians tend to be very fundamental, especially in their doctrine. And if, if, if somebody is talking to another Christian and they're getting along because they're agreeing and they just go off, I mean, just something minor that has no effect on their salvation or almost their walk with God, it's over. Which is, there's no brotherhood in that. Can you imagine if that was the way you conducted yourself in your marriage as soon as you had a irreconcilable difference, it was over? I mean, if I had to leave Bernadette every time <laughs> she annoyed me. So it's really, if, if you know, you know, I was raised in Orthodox Judaism, there's, it's much freer. It, it's, it's much more spiritual. It's much more about hearing God and having a connection with God and having intimacy with God, except as opposed to just theological doctrine. Listen, there's a place for theology and doctrine, but if that's all you have and you just take it, just, well, this is what it says. It says that hide under the Lord's wings. The Lord isn't a chicken. There's a lot of simile. There's a lot of metaphor. There's a lot of mixed metaphor. There's a lot of rich symbolism in the Bible. And if you don't know the Hebrew, you will miss the symbolism and you'll miss the intimacy. And all you'll have is a wonderful knowledge about God from here up. But it won't be here. And this is what God's after, the heart. Um, we want to take our time today. If you have to leave and it's getting late for anybody, you are not going to offend me or God. He understands. I totally understand. So we'll just take our time. But... Um, we have, um, we're going whitewater rafting, right? With the young adults and some of the quarry kids, some of the youth, right? What do we got, 35 people whitewater rafting? Hopefully we'll come back with a lot less, right? Of course we're doing <laughs> class five rapids. And this week I went with the youth to a, a water park. And it was really nice to just hang out with them, get to know them a little bit more and let them know I'm, I'm on their side. Um... Okay, if you've got your Bibles with you, you know, you can turn to Psalm 128. Um, we're going to talk about blessing today, and this psalm, if, it was, if there was a title, it would be titled The Blessing of the Lord. It really would be. That's what theologians tend to call it. I'd call it the same. It says, how happy is everyone. Some versions say how blessed, because blessed and happiness are the same thing. How happy is everyone who fears Adonai, who fears the Lord, who lives by his ways. So according to God, this is just God's opinion, true blessedness, true happiness is found in those that acknowledge the Lord in every area of their life. Now, can anybody attest to that? Can anybody say amen? amen. All right, so why do I have to ask? Amen does not mean yeah, or so just something that you say in a you know, church setting. Amen means that the truth has become true. Amen is a Hebrew word, amen, and it means, okay, that's true, but you shouldn't say it unless it's true in your life. It's not just a, a, a response that if you hear something that's true, you go, amen. It, you should only say amen if you've applied it to your life and you personally could say, yes, that's true. I know that's true because I doubt that everybody in here was saved from the time they were born, right? And you probably got saved somewhere along the line, right? And, and that salvation took somewhere, right? It really took root. 
because you went up in, in, your, in your camps, right? You went up front, and then you went up again when you were 10, then you got baptized at 11, and then you got reconfirmed, and then you fed, fell away, and then you came back, and then you fell away, and you came back, and, and now at 40, you're really walking with the Lord. It's okay. But you know what it is to not fear the Lord. You know how it, what it is to not acknowledge God in your life. It's, it's a horrible life. I know because I'm 63 and I lived half of my life on that side of things and the other half on the other side. And it wasn't like a little side. It was a major disparity. And I could tell you, although I ran with, you know, I had fun. I was making a lot of money as a young punk kid. Young kid. You know, had some homes. Had a lot of parties. Had a lot of friends with a lot of money. No issues. No health issues. I used to be good looking. I used to have hair. You know, I was in the secular world. I was doing phenomenal. And everybody thought I was phenomenal. And everybody thought I was doing phenomenal. And I put on a good show of it. And at times I was having a lot of fun. But deep down, I had no peace. And I kept on looking for it and wanting it and trying to strive for it. I just, I couldn't get it. You know, I had some great times. I did. I did. Been on some Lear jets. Been on some yachts. I had some great times. But even then it was like... It couldn't satisfy. And then the Lord found me. I met the Lord. And all of a sudden, the search was over. No more searching. I was done. And I've I've been fairly content with him this whole time. And I finally know what it is to have peace. Sometimes that peace is fleeting. That happens. We're human. But it comes back. That's the amazing thing, right? Sometimes we're unrested and it's, it's a wild ride and it could be a horrible day or a horrible week. But then, all of a sudden, we don't know from where, we're at peace. Isn't that unbelievable? So I can say amen to this. If somebody said, hey, how happy is everyone who fears out of noise who lives by his ways? I'm, amen. So, you know, if you feel that way, go ahead, jump in. It's okay. It says that based on that, if you fear the Lord, it doesn't mean cower. It means if you honor Him, if you respect Him. Listen, (laughs) make no mistake, I I do preach the uncompromised Word of God. And when it all comes down, I don't care if it's Catholic, charismatic, I don't care if it's Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, I don't care if it's Church of the Nazarene or any other denomination you want to name. When it all comes down, the key to God's heart is obedience nothing's changed you want to know what God's going to be like today look what he was like yesterday you want to know what he's going to be like tomorrow look what he was like today he doesn't change he doesn't change I know there's people that are dissatisfied so they try to find a new denomination or a new thing God's doing a new thing and they get all excited about that and they woo now we got it it's all about obedience because God's ways are ways to protect us our ways to prosper us, and our ways that we would know peace. That's why he does it. He is crazy about us. How many parents are here, or, you know, if you had a kid and they're grown, you're still a parent, by the way. Some people are like, no, no, because he's 40. That still makes you a parent. Why did you have rules with your children? Did you build these walls to keep them from going out? You built those walls to keep the enemy from coming in and destroying them. You wanted them, if you're sane and you're loving, you wanted them to prosper, right? You wanted them to be protected, right? You wanted them to know peace, right? So that's why God's not mean. He's crazy about you. And you're crazy to miss that. It's a very sad thing that the world thinks that God is so angry. Now, what the world is upset about is that God doesn't like some things they're doing. So they think all of a sudden if they have to have God as as their leader, they've got to change some things. Well, chances are those things they're doing are messing somebody up, if not themselves, so they should probably change them anyway. Right? He's not asked you to change something that's good for you. Anything God loves is good for you. Anything that God hates is bad for you make no if you don't understand that forget it so the key to god's heart is obedience that message will never change but you know what turns the key love 
The key to God's heart is obedience, but love turns the key. If my kids obey me because they have to, and they're thinking every day, I can't wait till I'm 18 so I can get the heck out of here. That's a very sad state of affairs. But if they obey me lovingly because they know that I'm only doing this because I love them, it's beautiful. So some of you are obeying God because you think you have to and you're being a good Christian. Not exactly. God loves a cheerful giver, even when you're giving him your, way, your obedience. He likes it just like I like it. This is what you'll get out of the deal. You will eat what your hands have produced. You will be happy and prosperous. Longevity, happiness. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine. In the inner parts of your house. Fertile myrtle. Your children around the table will be like shoots from an olive tree. An olive tree can handle any inclement weather. You chop it down, it grows back. Listen to what he's saying about your kids. I hear people down here go, he grew like a weed. I pull weeds. Don't call my kid a weed. Call him, an, call him what the Bible calls him, an olive tree, robust, strong, beautiful. This is the kind of blessing that will fall on him. You have no choice but to receive it. Who fears Adonai? There's a caveat. You can't just speak a blessing over somebody. You think your words are going to bless them if they're not conducting themselves in a certain way? That's as silly as saying I'm going to be rich and you never work. It's silly. It's, it's spiritually illogical. There's a caveat. God is a covenant maker and a covenant keeper. So he, he sticks out his hand and goes, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be prosperous. You're going to be happy. You're going to be protected. You're going to know peace. And then you've got to stick out your hand and say, okay, what, what do I got to do? Nothing? Well... Be nice if you obeyed my ways. You follow? Nobody likes a one-sided contract. And then it ends with a blessing. It says, may Adonai bless you from Zion. Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper. This was written 3,000 years ago. She's one of the most prosperous nations, if not the most prosperous nation per capita in the world. And she will prosper when Messiah returns. And this is what this is about. This is a prophetic blessing. It says, and may you live to see your children's children, shalom on Israel. This psalm joyfully, joyfully anticipates the future blessedness of the individual and the nation of Israel when King Messiah returns. And if you can't see that we're getting closer, either you have your head in the sand or something is radically wrong with you. So as much as the headlines are awful, I don't read them. As much as the news is awful, I don't watch it. As much as bad things are happening at an alarming rate, this was prophesied before Messiah would return. So if you're with Messiah, rejoice today. If you're not with Messiah, consider getting with him. Because this life is a blink. Eternity lasts a long time. Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, these are your children. Some of them are your children. Maybe some of them are just made in your image because they're not your children yet. I don't know, Father. I don't know. I barely could figure out what's going on in my own little life. But um, you know because you're omniscient. And so you have a plan today. I hope I don't get in the way. Uh, I'm sure I won't because if I do, you'll just push me out of the way. So I'm excited to see what you're going to do. I love you. We bless you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.